truth. Every day is the same. Whoa. What's up, everyone? <clears throat> How why ya? Low to chicken pants. Low to the lab TFT. Valentini, Mad Heart Lover. Hey, Ashko. Jay Cohn. A lot of first time chatters. Hello, first timers. What's shaking? For 1200, we're gonna get into our King's Indian speed run today. That's what's shaking. He is on. Transfer, Lancelore. Yeah, we were gonna do some speed running yesterday, but got into some other stuff, so I thought we'd save it for today. Thanks, Man Sand Jam. I uh, I promised you, Neil, uh, an upgrade to the uh, camera quality. So currently, I think we're using the nicest camera <laughs> we've ever used in the history of us streaming. You guys can see all the fucking, you can see all the, the slap marks from 10 years ago when I got rejected by a girl. You can see into my very soul in full 4K HD. There, that's true, Adam Hart. There was. There was. I got a, I got a couple speed run hours in me today, so that's the plan. Little Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening. Hey, Ashwin. the metaphor there blue jay trust me your boy didn't get chris rocked no 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 good chess good vibes well i can promise you that'll be good vibes today good chess is never a guarantee from my side of course but certainly from our opponents it'd be nice for our opponents not to be blundering pieces and pawns today right we want <laughs> the point is we want to get into these King, King's Indian ideas, figure out exactly what we should be doing. So hopefully we get some good middle games today. The slicer. Uh, Abeludo. Hello, hello. Yeah, I think we had like Title Tuesday in the live notification, but. No more Title Tuesday today. Bara Durbashi, thanks for gifting us up. And hello, hello. All right, I think I'm gonna jump right into it, guys. As usual, five minute games, King's Indian speedrun. We're gonna do King's Indian. White and black, King's Indian attack with the white pieces. King's Indian defense with the black pieces. And we're at 1200 today. We'll see where we, uh, where we get in a couple hours here. Hey, P Mark, Slicer, appreciate the 34 months. All right, let's do it. All right. Hopefully you guys, uh, you know, a couple days off. A couple days off. Hopefully you guys didn't forget about how we play uh, these lines with white, especially. So in C6, if knight f3, d5, d3, we, we face a queen trade. So against C6, I like to start this way so that there's definitely no queen trades. And there's nothing wrong with that line, by the way. That queen trade line is actually kind of good for white. But I'm going to avoid it for the purposes of this speedrun because 
think a lot of the point of this opening is that you get a nice attack going and it's not um, not super easy to showcase that if the queens are traded and for that exact reason obviously here if i take with the knight i even lose this pawn so it's definitely not good but i want to keep the queens on in general let's get our bishop here Queen is going to probably drop back at some point to e2, but we're sticking with the usual moves for now. Okay, and we know that eventually in this game, we want to play the move f4. So there's no way our queen can stay on that square. Our knight might want to use it. Queen has to take a step back. King wants to go to h2, f4. And I would say most of these moves we've seen before. These should be not the, the the trickiest and okay here's an easy one we can't even play f4 so this king h2 move should make a lot of sense if you guys are wondering what the music is yes we don't have the now playing on the screen but exclamation mark song always tells you what's playing so don't worry you can always do that Okay, bishop here. Um, I mean, I basically see no reason not to just go c3. c3 is a move we often play, and here, I mean, it just makes sense. I think maybe one or both of these moves is gonna make all the difference. Let's go for e5. Knight's gonna have to take a step back and then keep launching. Okay, now we've got this d4, knight f3, g4, f5. I'm looking at these moves. Again, pay attention to the fact that my bishop on c1 pretty much doesn't need to move. Like, I can do all this stuff. That's gonna be great for me without having moved this bishop at all. So, my opponent plays what I would call a pretty crafty move, like he wants to play knight here and attack the pawn and he's also pinning it. Um, so I'm going to play knight f3 and after this I'm going to play rook d1, just a necessary, necessary move. Well we haven't dealt with that yet Fisher, but no, I would say the same thing if you play the London system, if someone plays e5. You just can't play the London, right? And if you play e4 and you're trying to play a certain setup and they play d5, you kind of, kind of, you can't really force it all the time. But that's one of the only openings I think where you can't necessarily play the Zinian attack. Okay, well, we're being offered the opportunity to kick the knight out in multiple different ways and yeah just continuing like this though seems too good to be true let's do it g4 f5 we do always have d4 um the knight will get in there okay f6 so there's there's definitely gonna be some weaknesses here for me take that Wonder how he's gonna take back. This pawn is always uh, always a target, but if I rush and play d5, the knight jumps in and it's not entirely clear that I can kick it out. Right, so this move would be a little, a little fast, um, but b4 is the move I was planning if he took with the bishop or the knight. It's gonna kick the knight away and that pawn should be dead ski. Let's start with a check. We're also hitting the bishop. Although, if he defends the check and the bishop, he's going to face an even bigger problem in knight e5 or knight g5. So, even though he hung a piece here, he actually probably made the right decision. So much so, that I'm wondering, should I even take that? You know, first of all, we want to make sure our queen's not getting trapped. Queen here, rook there, looks like our queen gets out. So no, we're not getting trapped. 
think we can probably do it then. I think the closed positions are fine uh, with the King's Indian. As long as you know how to attack, the right ways to attack, then I don't think it's something to be that concerned about. Um, I might actually go Rook here. Rook here, Rook e8, Queen d6. Also looks pretty good though. Uh, let's get on the open file. I think there's a real chance that he like even takes on e1, right? And runs into this. Yeah, Queen can also drop back to, uh, to c5 at night. And we're up material here, so no need to be too fancy. Queen is nice and centralized on d4. Okay, that move might be a little much. I really want to do this, but our pawn is uh, under attack, so let's play the less inspired bishop d2. Still though, up a piece should really be um, should really be enough. Let's just attack this guy, and I don't see where it's going. Doesn't really have much to do but lose another piece here. I was <laughs> waiting for this uh, big time move from the guy. Very impressive. Queen g4. My goodness, where do they make these 1200s these days? <laughs> Who is this guy? Queen takes g4? Zoinks! <laughs> I ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> See ya! My goodness, Queen takes G4. You know, hats off to this guy. That's uh, impressive and nothing else. Just impressive. No, he took his time on that move. That, that definitely looked like he was purposeful. Chip C3. To get on that nice diagonal. Bring the rook in. Oh no. The windmill. I gotta take his pawns first before I meet him. Oh, GG. Not the windmill. Yeah, I think I think when you get the windmill like that. If you are short on time, obviously you just mate them. But otherwise, it's just too tempting to take all your opponent's <laughs> every single one of your opponent's pieces. The torture. Hello, Paco. Let's make sure to get that win added to the total. That's correct, George. We gotta we gotta give this guy props, man. Queen G4 was a sweet move. You know. Here, here, you know, my king can't make the moves necessary to defend my queen because they're covered by this knight. So I would have to play like, you know, for example. And the only way to not draw the game would be to go here. And I think white's still winning here. I have no doubt about that, but still an impressive move. Still an impressive move. Eric Charneski, thanks for 53 months. Thank you, Eric. Alan and Chess also for 50 months with Prime. 50 and a 53. <laughs> Would have worked on VBKN. Oh, versus VBKN. Uh, yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, I can confirm 
that sucker would have fallen for it. But at least we would have still been up a piece. <laughs> All right, we started off with a win today. That's good. All right, let's get uh, straight into the next game. Lane McIntyre, thanks uh, for the, the sub with Prime there. All right, big gad this year. Yo, welcome Andy. Just started our speed run for the day. All right, let's go G6. E6, just kind of taking care of that square a little bit. So, you know, in the past when this has happened, I think we've pretty much gone knight takes and then d5 or even just d5. Like when these two things are, are like that, there's almost always something with d5 that just works either knight takes or on here to take back with the knight and then thread the bishop so um, i think i'll do this one this is the a very similar kind of tactic to one we've used before i mean call it a tactic you know it's not it's <laughs> not like insanely special just simplifies things but it's often in black's favor to do so get a little more space and Probably at some point play e5 to open up this bishop a little bit more. No, that's a good point, George. So he's coming at me here with knight f6. That's a hurtful move. Very hurtful. Knight f6 is gonna win my queen. I got an undefended piece here. Hello, Eddie, the endgame magician. Best way to deal with that? Hmm. Well, this one looks pretty good. And I say that because I think he's gonna go here and then maybe even bishop f, uh, f5. I wish there were some uh, tricks down, uh, down there, but I don't think so. Let's play this one. Knight g3, I think we'll actually step back. Keep the bishop on the board. I'm not gonna just hand that over. See you there, Gav. Got to be, uh, got to be the knight move next. And if knight g5, we're always taking the queen at least at the moment. I feel like I probably want to stop knight c5. I mean, you know, the, the bishops right now they really need to move e5. But I tell you, it's not very easy to achieve. So I'm probably going to stick with a move that. We've kind of touched before, which is this h6 move. Stay within the realm of uh, the type of moves that we've been playing from the get go. Okay, this move, I mean, I can play b5. It's not necessarily a, like a permanent fix because he could just play rook c1 and threaten c4 again. Once he plays c4, knight takes, here, here, here. Uh, the tactics there should never work out for me. So I think the bottom line is we kind of have to move the queen. And where is a good square to move the queen? Probably at this point, maybe a5. Almost inclined to say a5 because if I move the queen, then the knight can actually move. You can go to the c5 square. So I don't want to play queen d7 and just allow this. If I know this is coming and I gotta move my queen, well, it's actually a pretty easy move. I can just have to move it out of the way. Knight c5, bishop d5, and we continue. This pawn is also gonna be hanging in some lines. And yeah, this was the problem is that if you play c5, well, hang on, I've got literally <laughs> all my pieces, every single one of them watching the uh, d4 pawn, so can't quite do it. I think we'll take with the rook. I have devious ideas here, attacking the rook. So like, you know, for example, you could like, you know, leave this rook, and he wouldn't be able to take it because of that, right? 
So it's very typical with like the double up, like, oh yeah, takes, takes, for, you know, a nice even trade for the boys. But actually I'm gonna insert queen takes e1 with check first. Three, three. And that should, uh, should probably be a little too much for Gav to handle. Feel bad, Gav put together a solid, solid game there. But, you know, when it rains, it pours when it comes to blunders. That's for sure. GG to Gav. Handshake. Honestly, both games were pretty good so far today. Young King Simba 99. Not 99. Sorry, I was looking at Ian uh, Lane McIntyre 99 with subbing with Prime. Uh, 718. Bring back the beard. I don't know about that, you know? I don't I don't know about this new camera quality, you know, you guys all up in my grill looking at my beard. Be able to see what I had for dinner last night. I, I don't know if I'm about that life. Gotta stay clean shaven. The, the speedrun will be on YouTube. I imagine the first episode is probably going to be in a couple days. Um, maybe Friday. So you can look out for it there. I was kind of glad you didn't pick up. I'm 145. You missed the old place. Really? Really? I think, well, first of all, we're, we haven't even come close to reaching our final form here in, uh, in Toronto, but does it not have a little bit of the vibe? I, hope I, that you're doing I think it's not too far off. We're getting there. I want to go back to the old days. Because I miss you. And I just thought of you, so I thought I'd call you to tell you. That yeah, Dabcat, 100%, you got it. So, you see here the, uh, the account, if I go to like my profile. Yeah, it just says, like, all rating points will be given back. But so, the I'm not hogging them all. Ain't a pros, though. Yeah, let's get another game in here. Yeah, Daxi Poo, as, as I said. Not, um, not quite in our final form yet. Yes, you do, Eric Charniski. Exactly. So all these speedrun accounts are cleared with Chess.com um, ahead of time by by all the all the streamers that you see doing it. Get another game. One, two, three, four is his rating. All right, let's go with E4. Oh, we got our uh, D5 for the first time. So if you're playing the, the King's Indian attack stuff like this, this is basically the, I mean, F5 doesn't really exist. And Knight F6, you can still play D3 and Knight D2. So this is really the only move where you can't play like exactly what you want. So you have two options. The first option is A, it's the Scandinavian. Just play against the Scandinavian on its own as its own opening. And uh, you know, it's the only thing outside of this setup that you'll have to know. It's option one. Then option two is to play D3. Take, take, and yes, allow queen trade, but a lot of those positions, surprisingly, can actually be very good for white. So I'm gonna start by doing this. We'll see if we can um, put together a, you know, at least a, an idea of what this uh, position might look like. If I see the knight there, first thing I'm doing is this. My king pretty much always wants to go to c2. 
this is like where it hides out. Wow, F5. I would call this move pretty advanced, honestly. Um, I, this move is either really bad or really good because positionally it's a terrible move, right? So I'm pretty impressed by F5. I'm gonna leave it there for the moment and I'm probably just gonna play Knight F3 or Knight D2 to start. I think maybe Knight D2. Because F5 is one of those moves that, yeah, you can take it. Bishop D3, it gets a little dicey. <laughs> Not sure I really wanna go there. Um, do we go here or even Knight E2, Knight G3? That's another one, honestly. I think I might do that. Let's go knight here, knight g3. Still got his knight um, taken care of there. Oof. Big time move from the guy. Bishop f5. Well, if e3, I can take it. So that much is good. Bishop there. I mean, I think we got to take it, guys. It's the only, uh, it's the only way. Knight takes, followed by knight f6, f3. Guard that. Very sweaty goblin. In fact, I've already looked at my uh, my history of uh, players that I've played, and uh, I've already seen, <laughs> I've already seen a few guys banned <laughs> from the speedrun so far up to 1200. Already seen a few names taken, unfortunately. The guy wants to play here and bishop takes. I, I can tell you guys I'm definitely dealing with an extremely strong player. <laughs> like, very, very strong. There's no doubt in my mind. This guy knows what's going on. E6, very, very high level move, I would say. I need a rook on E1, stat, like, faster than you've ever seen. Let's go like this, bring a rook to E1. <laughs> rook E1, very important. Yes. I have to guard this. See, bishop d3 does sort of do that, but knight e5 hits the bishop in a bit of an uncomfortable way. But bishop d3 is nice because at least it has the idea of moving that piece, finally. Uh, I think it's time to move this king out of the, uh, out of the pressure. This is tempting, although I think I'll save it for now. I should take back the knight. Let's take. So we've sort of maintained this e4 uh, stronghold. And if I could get my bishop to like c2, I think that would be a comfy square. I think he's still in theory, yeah. He's looking comfortable here. My boy, my boy Lord Shalom. Well, I know it's not the King's Indian attack, you know, exactly, but it absolutely still applies that winning the guy's light square bishop is a huge accomplishment. It really is. I'm very happy right now. We're living life. We're living large. Yeah, the bishops are looking juicy. So honestly, I'm probably gonna take that bishop and put it back on c1 at some point. I don't want it loose dangling on the d file. I'm gonna tuck it in. It's not doing anything here anyway, so. At some point I can see in the very near future that move uh, getting played. Let's attack this, and if uh, g5, then h4. And these bishops start to, start to come alive. So this move is living by a a thread there, but it is living. Let's play h4. Topping g5. This knight's getting the, uh, the rebound in. 
You know, he's, he's starting to jump around, get annoying. No 96, at least not for the moment. Um, if rookie seven, he's still not really threatening it because he would lose the G7 pawn. And I'm thinking maybe H5, but also bring the rook to the middle, attack that pawn. Let's stop B5. Yeah, no, he's rerouting the, the pieces. Okay, A5, we're gonna fix the pawns here. Uh, okay, I don't think <laughs> he may not be aware of that one. <laughs> This is a new, a new move. Hit him with the old end passing. You won't know what hit him. Yeah, and now I think we'll bring our rook over here and hitting the a6 pawn should be pretty lethal. Lots of tempting moves. B4, rook takes a6. Um, rook takes a6 looks like the simplest though. But B4 or rook takes a6 look almost look like mate incoming or something. Start with this. Okay, check. And I think we can get some trades in here. Mm, trades or maybe mate? <laughs> Not sure. Rook takes b7 might have led to you know me winning the g7 pawn and so on and so forth, but maybe this leads to even better. This is threatening to checkmate him or win basically all his pieces. These bishops are just bringing the pain, man. It's really hard to, to deal with that. This looks like a good move. Um, I think I'm probably gonna go for this one. Need this. It's like, how hard does a guy have to work here? Here, here, this rook takes c6 as well. Rook here, there's this move, but like, by golly, I'm working hard here to win material. Look for better. I think I, I was gonna say, I think I broke him for a second there. I don't think he hit his, for some reason, his calculations must have ended in one move. There must have been some reason that, you know, he just wasn't looking any further than one move. <laughs> Somehow, everything must have ended one move there. If there were no further moves computed. Hey, the account's name's Speed Only, my guy. You have no chance, brah. You got no chance, brah. GG. GG to the Lord. GG to the Lord. Definitely have to KO games like that. When you take out the Lord himself. <laughs> huge, huge for the boys there. Very strong. Very strong opponent, no? Yeah, I threw him for a loop here. After not checkmating, I think he just froze. It's like, wait, what? Game should be over. <laughs> what, what? Big mistake by my opponent was giving me the light square bishop. Honestly, my position only got very, very nice here. 
this move was not so nice. It'd be better for black if he lost that bishop than losing that bishop, for example. And honestly, the 1200 category has been the strongest category in the entire speedrun by far. Like, just these three games have been stronger than anything we've encountered so far by a big margin. They might be stronger than anything we encounter for the next 300 points. <laughs> these, these games are tough. Seriously. Well, let's get the next one on. I'm telling you, like, there's a promised land after 1200, Neil. There, there must be, because, because these, uh, these games, even if you're like 1500 strength, you're not leaving 1200. I mean, you're staying right there, man. You're going nowhere. I get it now. It's a tough life. Okay, so hang on a sec. He looks thirsty to do something like that. Let's just go H6 and see what he's cooking. Okay, that's what I like to see. Peak was 1400 and my peak is 1227 so yeah. yeah i heard it there first let's go uh knight probably knight d7 e5 queen e8 these kind of things like i uh, sort of want my position to look like that now if his bishop was there we'd be going for the typical london trap but not quite let's get that c6 move to take care of the uh the knight squares and then queen e8. It's a very similar kind of move that we've seen before. There is no threat of this. He's got it covered. Queen e8 is nice though. Gets out of that. Gets out of that pin basically. Just don't want to worry about that. So I'm thinking about taking this. There's also knight c5. Hmm. I think what the most in line would be. I think we'll take and I was gonna say if he takes the pawn, we definitely needed to play a6 to stop knight there. This move is uh, you know, just screaming to be played, but it does not work just yet. So I think it's just time for this one. F5 with this idea, and if E4, he is kind of trapping his own piece there. Same with this though, isn't he trapping his own piece here? Gets a little bit messy after this move because takes, takes, you know, rook arrives on E1, queen here. I don't think it's entirely obvious. I'll tell you what, if I play A6, I don't think he can do anything to stop this. So I'm gonna play this. Okay, this is what I would like to see. I think b5 now, force this move. And now we go for this. Can he even stop this? I don't think there's anything he can do. He could play h3, but even still, f4 maybe. So I'm gonna go for it. This is our g5 moment. I think we picked a good time after uh, relocating his bishop to b3 for him. Queen's also covering g6, important to remember. If rook e1, I think knight e5 is sufficient, but also this. And that move, just you know, don't make the mistake of pre-moving on takes bishop. But as a result, we're actually gonna get a couple pieces here. Your bishop's still trapped, boy. Let's get the knight in. Bishop f5. But I would say that uh, in terms of the moves that black had to make in this, it was pretty standard. Like once you get the f5, that's why we play h6, f5, fit that pawn on e5. It all looks pretty standard. I'm gonna take with the pawn here, look to get f3, queen to h3, and just administer the mate. 
Maybe a nice little queen blunder for the boys. Knight f3 is a big threat. Bishop h3, even pawn f3. Okay. You might do this. Unfortunately, bishop f5 meets that very well, but. Bishop h3. Uh oh. I think he's really trying to uh, get d6 check. Just have this feeling. Let's go here. And I think it's time to take some stuff. The question is, are we taking that or are we taking that? It looks like open season right now. It all looks good. Bishop g3, eh? Bishop g3 looks pretty solid. I can't, uh, can't argue. I can't argue. Yeah, I don't have much uh, to say against Bishop takes g3. Rook e6, there's Bishop takes e6, so I think it's a solid chat recommendation. Oh, we just took. No, obviously we secure the Bishop checkmate here. Yay. Bishop meet. It still counts as a bishop meet. The last move was a bishop. Right? Bishop takes d5 checkmate. Don't forget it. Thanks, uh, CCN, for the six months with Prime. Roko resub for 20 months. Uh, Mr. Alvin Pang, appreciate the five months using Twitch Prime. Pilkey, four months with Prime. <laughs> Oily Williams, thanks for the uh, uh, three months with Prime. And Keen Bean Bean for the four months using Twitch Prime. Exclamation mark Prime. Nightmates only. Well, then I really might be hard stuck to 100, especially against this crowd. These guys are good. How is the name not taken on chess.com? You mean Ibilatif9? I have no idea. It's one of the first names I would have taken if I made an account. Where's the timer? No timer, bro. I call it a speedrun because there's not really another name that kind of works, but. I don't think it really... <laughs> I'm not really trying to go as fast as possible. I'll put it that way. I'll be cheering for both Joe Saka. Definitely both. But if it came down to Canada playing anyone, I would cheer for Canada in the World Cup. Hey Redson, full of mercenary. How you doing, buddy? Zomnipotent. Hello, Joe. Ralph Wiggum. Um, we need a win update. There we go. There we go. Actually, someone that reminds me. Someone. Actually, speaking of bullet mercenary, that reminds me. Um, someone said that this NordVPN link didn't work yesterday. Are they trolling? I have to see. They were, right? Does it work for you? This uh, exclamation mark NordVPN? Yeah, actually guys, I think we'll all have to click the link and just double check that it works. <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> Someone was like, oh, your your NordVPN link uh, des doesn't work, and uh, I didn't believe him. Yeah, everyone, 
Does it work for you guys if you sign up as well? It's not, it's not working for me. Having a little trouble with this at the moment. Let, let me know, let me know. Keep me, keep me updated. Be updated. <laughs> No, but seriously, exclamation mark NordVPN. I'm glad it, I'm glad it does work. It's our latest uh, latest sponsor, and uh, working with them for I think about another three weeks or so. The link works. We're happy to hear it. There is a discount available. We've worked with NordVPN before, and uh, yeah, if you use that link in the chat, there is a nice uh, <laughs> nice little discount available. Um, obviously, it is uh, intended for new customers. So, you already have NordVPN, it won't work with your same email. Now, I'm not saying what to do. I'm just saying the facts of the situation. Thank you, Cracked Chuck one with a prime sub. Hello, Ilya, JK Russia. So yeah, I'll be talking to you guys more about uh, NordVPN, but I'm gonna give him a shout out there, exclamation mark NordVPN as we get our next uh, game on here. What are we, 12, 12.36, we're moving slow. That's why it's not a speed run, dude. How am I supposed to add five minutes to my time in every speed run for the NordVPN promo, you know? Oh, this is nice. We're gonna get a, a straight up King's Indian, it looks like. Do you get better at chess with NordVPN? Absolutely. It's well known that the best countries for chess, you know, Russia, India, China, with NordVPN, you can just play as if you're from China and you're just gonna play so much better. I mean, that's just obvious. Hashtag home screen says NordVPN is great because it helps you evade IP bans for cheating. Listen, if it sells NordVPN, it sells NordVPN. <laughs> I said nothing. I said nothing. If it sells, it sells. That's all I'm gonna say. If it sells, it sells. Okay, we got E5 in. Probably a uh, soon time to move our knight, maybe to H5 or something and go F5. White is just, uh, he's cranking all the pawns forward here. Well, I'm gonna play a move here, which I think he's quite instructive. It's not a mind-blowing move to uh, to those who are firmly in tune with uh, the game of chess, but a5 here is gonna be particularly annoying for my opponent to deal with because he cannot meet it with a3 and recapture. And he wants a pawn on that square because he wants to stop my knight from going there. And if he plays b5, well then he's got his queen over here, his knight over here, and he's completely shut down all the squares if he goes here and I go there, it's completely locked up. And we all know who's playing for a win over here. It's me, it's your boy, right? It's not happening for him. King side is my side. I'm about to launch a serious attack. So if I can close things up over here, I'm definitely interested. Start by taking, all right? Start by taking, I can probably disrupt him a little bit here with move knight g4. He's so gonna have to take a step back. And his piece is like, he's just fully neglecting the king side here. Only queen side pieces, uh, maybe long castle. I'm just wondering, like, does he know he has king side pieces? Maybe not. Let's go f5, full throttle. Ooh, wait, how full do we want the throttle to be? Hang on a sec. I think we go here. A very classic beat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Hey, we got him. I don't think he should have developed his king side pieces. As soon as he developed his king side piece, he lost. He lost the game immediately. That's a lesson. That's a clear lesson right there. Creamy lead sauce, thanks for the 62 months. Crack Chuck, thanks again for that prime. And minimum overkill, five months. Got Creamy in here for 62. Hot damn. Five years and then some. On to number six. So, what did we learn from this game? First of all, if you can play A5, seriously, and they cannot meet it with A3, it's almost always a good move. Like, if they have a pawn on B4, you play A5, they can't play A3 because of the pin. Like, they can play A3, but it doesn't help, right? If they can't take back with the pawn, it's almost always advantageous for Black to play it. White goes here, this is all closed up, and Black says, okay, dude, like, what are you doing? Uh, this is so relevant. Every bit of counterplay you might have had on the queen side is completely gone now. Terrible for White. And Black just, you know, steamrolls you on the king side. And if you go here, well, it doesn't matter. There's no way you can... Take back the pawn you're gonna have to take with your queen and this is what we had in the game black plays b6 he owns that square for his knight white suddenly doesn't ever get this move to crack open the position so white's counterplay is like significantly reduced here as well and there's no good way to meet it you either capture push or get captured and the result's the same black gets this square so this is a probably the only important thing i would say to remember from this game Melt like butter says, I am bored if. Bye. Okay, melt like butter. Goodbye. Forever. <sighs> I'm gonna miss him. How can I even. I just need a moment here. How can I even continue the speed run without melt like butter here? Got to get the courage together. Keep on going. All right, I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I can handle another 1,200 after that. Uh-oh, this guy's almost a 1,300. I didn't ask for this. Hello, Dr. Lord Mayo. Ah, tricky guy. Okay, he's doing a funny looking setup here. Does anyone have the, uh, did anyone have the money line on uh, him hanging a piece here? I think, I <laughs> think it's a strong money line here. <laughs> oh, E4, unbelievable move. Very impressive. Seriously, that was really good. Let's do our typical um, King's Indian moves. So c6 and um, knight c5. That was awesome, actually. A lot of people would lose some money, including me. I would have cranked, cranked the money line on e5, e4 working. Knight uh, here. Sure, we want a rook on d8. Also, maybe bishop g4. Okay, I'm definitely thinking about bishop to g4, um, just to take this, and also get the rook over to d8. I'm looking to make a dark square promise here. Pawns do not matter in favor of me showing King's Indian plans. So please let me take this. I promise I won't take the pawn. It's a scout's honor, yeah, okay. We got a good deal. So, we get to witness one of the best things to do in the King's Indian. 
To give up your light square bishop for the knight, because you've played a structure where you've gone e5, really, pawns are starting to get fixed on dark squares. The knights should kind of rule this game, knight e6, knight d4, or knight f4. The dark squares are what matter, and white's actually traded off the dark square bishop for our bishop, which was not so great. Not so great. So, let's see if we can, uh, first of all, let's probably do this. The queen e7 after queen e3. Chess Squire, no, the, um, this speedrun is not on YouTube yet, but I think the first episode will probably be in, uh, uh, in a couple days, so maybe the 1st of April. Or maybe, maybe that's gonna be an April Fool's upload. <laughs> I never understand these April Fool's YouTube uploads. It's like... Ah, uh, uh. Chess Pros are gonna quit streaming. <laughs> Obviously, it's a joke because we all know that we'll be charging $150 for a shot at the age of 55. And we also know that you guys will still be paying. Queen C5, a nice trade initiated here by moi. $200 song request, $150 shots, as <laughs> as uh, the boys continue the legacy <laughs> into the 50s. Okay, so we've got the ideal, literally the ideal position. The pawn covers these two squares, which means the knight can't be bothered. The knight covers these two squares, which means the rooks can't infiltrate, and the pawn covers these two squares so the knight can't get in either. So this this arrangement of knight and pawn is ugh, just great. It's just great. Let's bring this rook over here. I'm even so proud of my uh, control here on the D file that I don't even need to be on the D file. It's just a good position. Rook A3, go me. See, he's trying to double on the d-file, but for what? There's nothing to attack. Nothing. Right? Meanwhile, I'm the one taking all the stuff here. Okay, again, this pawn can be taken, but it just, I lack interest in that pawn. It just doesn't do it for me, you know? Doesn't do it for me. Maybe rook d8, you know, takes, takes, rook here, rook here, takes, 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 king f1. We, we need this to happen. Rook here? Where are you going, bruh? Back? Get the hell back there, why don't you? Make yourself known. Okay. Let's attack. Notice how painful his position is to play. He can't move the damn knight anywhere. Really, really annoying. Okay, now we can take it. This rook's gonna have to go somewhere. Interesting. No matter which rook I take, he's he's got a safe way out, more or less. But still, this knight can't really move anywhere, so I'm gonna take this one. He's gotta take that, and then after rook d2, again, this knight can't go anywhere. And, you know, the poor lad might very well walk into knight d2. It's just, the tea leaves are there. Because otherwise, he's gotta play something like this, and I'll just take, and I'm up three pawns in an end game. It all looks tough. Oof. I mean, <laughs> even knight takes f2 should really be considered, but I gotta keep it simple. One time for the fans. One time for the fans. 
This is just too many pawns here. This doesn't fly. Here they come. Here they come marching, boy. Okay, that's another pawn. That is yet another one. Maybe we should play this out. Oh, he's not interested. I don't blame him. Put that in the win column. GG. What happened here? Ah, yes. So he actually played well here to play E4. Not allow that. And listen, there are going to be games where your opponent gets this move in. It's going to happen to you, okay? It's not the end of the world. Right? If you want to deal with the queen here, you can always take, play knight G4. The queen will have to leave. Or you play knight g4 right now, and you get your king here, so you stop the queen's invasion. So you should never be dealing with a position where the queen is on h6 and it's just permanently annoying you. But in those positions, right, where you've already exchanged uh, the d pawn for the e pawn like this, bring a rook to d8. Yes, give away your light squared bishop, because it's all about the dark squares in this game. And if he had not played b4, I would have probably, probably played something like a5 next to try to secure my knight's position on c5. But the way it happened was even better. Now there's no B-pawn, there's no D-pawn, there's no Rook B5, there's no Rook D5. That knight is staying there forever. And it's very, very, very powerful. Okay, we finally get the white pieces again. Looks like it's been a minute here. Okay, I take that back. We had the white pieces there. And we may not get the next game. <laughs> Never mind. I do not have the white pieces. How about now? Ride far. Okay. Ride far. Okay. It's going to be a D3 from me, pal. Oh. Hopefully uh, we have some plebs in chat. Clubs, quickly, you have a minute to vote. Which Slim Jim flavor hits different? Original, hot AF, or mild? Remember, every vote from a pleb is five cents in my pocket. Five cents. Okay, bishop g4, well, don't you know it. Here comes h3. And yes, we want to play queen here, but remember, these knight moves, always, always annoying. Wow, we got five votes in here so far. That's awesome. 25 cents. That goes a long way. Okay, he's hitting this pawn. Now, queen e1, I would probably go for if the bishop was still here. But because there's no pin, I don't think I mind playing uh, queen e2 to guard this. King h2, knight h4. These are all the kind of moves we want to get in this position. Yeah, we got paid a quarter for that. A quarter. It's big, big time. I think it's time for our, for our knight to h4 move. Now, bishop h5 can still be played. Yeah, I might even take a step back with my queen. But the other thing you can do after this is just remember, bring your other knight in because you're still jumping into the f5 square with this guy. So it's still pretty nice. As for this, hey, it's always tempting to take this bishop so let's just go straight for it wow he takes that way interesting interesting okay well i'm gonna play b4 and you know maybe moves like a4 knight c4 coming up next all the above 
certainly looks dangerous with that one. Okay, let's go knight here. Hit that bishop, hit bishop back. I think it's time for b5 now. Question mark. Might be time for b5. Bishop a3 also looks good. Hmm. At a crossroads here. It's b5, knight b8. Then if I go bishop a3, there's bishop c5. Which I'm not thrilled about. Um, a5 is a nice move. Kind of restricts things here. And bishop a3 is another one, but then he might play b5 himself. So which one shall we do? I'm thinking, I think I'm probably gonna go for a5. Seems to restrict and take the most squares, which is nice. Chess Tim, thanks for 77 months. Thank you there, Tim. All right, I think it's, uh, might be time to do this one. I was thinking about knight e3 as well, but this is just fine. Um, I think we'll be all over these light squares in a sec. So let's do this. We'll go knight takes and try to put that knight to d5. Oh. He's making sure to keep that very, very powerful bishop. Doesn't he? He wouldn't want to trade it for my bishop, of course. Why would he want to do that? <laughs> my bishop's only strong and centralized. All those things. We want to get the bishop to h3, bishop c5, maybe. Okay, well, it's kind of walking into this, so I think I'm gonna play it. Bishop to h3 after this move as well. Try to gain some more time. And he goes here, here. I mean, I think it's just time to take that. Yeah, here we'll definitely go this, this way though. Bishop is better on h3 than it is on g2. That's why at h4. As soon as you win the light square bishop, often it makes a lot of sense to do that. Hey, my bishop is a really strong piece, but that's material. I'm going to take it and continue to reroute here. Either queen check or knight there. And yeah, I want to play rook a1 to d1. That's my next idea. Bishop g5, remember, guys, there was always knight f6. So. Bring the rook into the position. Uh, like it's the right idea to break this pawn structure, but unfortunately it passes over to me, free knight. And I think that's gonna be too much. Now I'm actually up a full rook. I think we can get our checkmate here. Takes, takes, g6, mate. Mm, g6 first, well, now you're just Gosh darn it, now you're tempting me. Jack. Annoying that after this, this move actually isn't made. 
is not me. Because queen takes. Queen takes h7 doesn't seem to do anything either. So I am without a completely clean path to victory. Rook here, there's gonna be a check. If he takes, we'll just take back. And here, this is what I want. Now we give this check, and with my queen here, I'm taking on f8, and then going to f6. And delivering a mate. With the rook, of course. Not the queen, but the rook. GG. GG to ride far. Speed only over ride far. This is a this is a game I think we've almost seen before. I've even played these exact move, almost these exact same moves. So I think this position is like a core position. I think you'll see it a lot over the course of playing this opening. Because the most logical thing for black to do when you're playing moves like this that don't have anything to do with the center is yeah, they're gonna put their pieces on the bare normal squares and then play d5. That always makes sense. So I think these positions are the ones you should pay attention to the most. Yes, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna castle, knights like this. If bishop takes knight, I'm gonna take with the queen. And if knight there, I'm gonna go back and fall by c3 and kick the knight out. And then I'm gonna play king h2, queen d2, so on and so forth. If it's more like the game, and I go bishop h5, well, I wanna play my move queen e1. That's the rock star move. But when the knight can go here or here, you just, you just can't do this. Because this is too annoying. The only way to defend this pawn is to go back. And there's no there's no point going here and then going back. And if you play c3, you still lose. So better to just do this first. Cover those squares. The knight is just pretty much useless. I've shown this from both colors now. It's a really prominent idea in this entire system, whether you're white or black. Knight on c6, play c3. Knight on c3, play c6. And then, yeah, you went back. But at this point, we're doing all the standard ideas. King h2, knight h4. And at some point later on into the middle game, you're probably noticing that, yeah, if there's no immediate need to play f4, then I'm often expanding on the queen side with b4, a4, and once again, look at what move it was here. That's move 19. It was move 19 by the time I moved my bishop once. So if that's not a reminder, I don't know what is, seriously. Your bishop on c1 or Vice versa, your bishop on c8 does not need... It's not like you should intentionally wait to move 20, but you don't need to feel the need to move it just to move it. Like, you know, oh, I need to finish development. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Bishop on c1 is fine. You don't need to, uh, don't need to move it just to develop it. A slaw 3 97. Well, yeah, that's that's part of my uh, that's part of my life story, man. 2012 to August 2013, I gained yeah over 250 FIDE points. That's when I dropped out of school, moved to Europe, and played chess full time. Basically, just played chess nonstop. When I was in school, I was setting alarms on my clock to wake up for online bullet arenas. So I think I got the hint that I was kind of interested in chess at the time. It was, it was too much, you know? I was like, yeah, okay, I think I better give this chess thing a try. I'm waking up for a fucking bullet arena. You know, I think, <laughs> I think it's time to move to Europe. Beard phase was in 2017, not till much later. That's right, chess cube, Mr. Mercenary. Back when we were streaming for maybe two viewers, and it wasn't even on Twitch, it was on livestream.com back in 2010. 
so the two viewers would be myself and Eric. <laughs> That'd be it. I'd have my own stream open and he'd be watching. <laughs> two viewers. Mr. Steinkaus, thanks for gifting us up. Red Espen, 200 bits. Yo, yo, Eve. Yo, yo, I. Thanks for the seven months with Prime. Anti 97B, gifting a sub. Crack Chuck with the Prime sub from earlier. Thank you, Crack, again. Chess Tim, like I said, 77 months. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you, Emmanuel. And here we are a decade later. That's right, Bob K. Here we are. Feels good, man. Here we are, a decade later, playing a 1200 for thousands of viewers. Ah, God. I think back then, in the early days, this is what I wanted my life to be. Here I am. <laughs> Is this Su so real or is this sus or real? Almost sounds like a, you know, to be or not to be. Sus or real? Hello, Yasser. That would be one viewer and one presenter, says Yasser. Yeah, so you know, there's something that I don't think you'd understand, buddy. All right? And it's that old thing called a smartphone. All right? When I'm on my smartphone, trust me, I'm a whole different person. I'm no longer the presenter. I'm my own viewer. You know what they say? In life, you should be your own biggest fan. Yeah, sir. You ever heard someone say that? You should be your own biggest fan. Chess Bros took that to the next level. Bishop G2. Oh, is Yasser gonna be here for the bishop pair? For sure he's gonna go queen d7, right? The thirst is gonna kick in. There's no way this doesn't happen. There's just no way. Dude, there we go. Thank you. I got a bishop for you, Yasser. Woo! I'll give it to you the next time I see you, buddy. The thirst, I'm telling you, they all want that H3 pawn. And remember, I have no need to even capture this right away, right? If I take that right now, you're just gonna take it back. But if I play King H2, then I'm at least getting the next plan going, you know? The other thing, which I'm pretty sure my opponent's gonna do, like, pretty sure, is probably hang the bishop. I just got that feeling. So A4 is always way better than playing B4, right? So A4, he's like, oh, let me get rid of that knight, right? So typical. Oh, let me get rid of that knight. Oh! 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 Give me that bishop, bud. I got another bishop for you, Yasser. You can have this one as well. Put it in the same box. Send you both of them. Courtesy of your old buddy, Hambo. Now we got both of his bishops. I would call this game great success. Yep, we get it done here, Kevin. One bishop's just not enough, you know? It has to be more than that. Multiple Bs. Wow. 
Well, we do have a maybe a knight takes a5 move. Honestly, I might not play it, but when you got guys like Yasser just kind of like just lurking, you need to play moves like this. Leaving pawns by the wayside is just not gonna not gonna fly. Maybe he thinks he can take this. Yeah. Guys, it's just I'm just really I'm in his head right now. And he knows it. Now I'm in his head. He's gotta get out of there. Unlucky. Unlucky. We got both his bishops. We got his pawns. And we got his rook. <laughs> that guy did not have a good day at the office. GG. Oh, we, def we definitely KO those. Absolutely. But there's a wide range in the 1200 category, you know? There's the guys we played earlier today, the guys we played now. I mean, it it is, uh, you've got 700s and you've got 1600s in the 1200 category. It's tough, it's a tough category. I've been very impressed today. Let's see what else we got. Mano, 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 man. Let's play G6. So obviously we're not quite getting the King's Indian, but only so much you can do against move E4. But it's nice to see that my opponents aren't just hanging this pawn, right? That's that's a good sign. Okay, go for our typical pawn move, and we see this. This is great. So now, play h6. We'd love to see the move queen d2. Fortunately, we don't get it, but I think the idea is pretty much all remain the same. When we see the, the position close up like this, you know, your eyes should just, <laughs> you know, literally shift like a, I don't know, like a surveillance camera or something. Like you see movement, boom. Your eyes should all be looking at the king side right now because the queen side is closed up. If I'm making a move on the queen side here, it's probably this move to stop the knight from going there, attacking my pawn. That's about it. Otherwise, I'm only thinking about things like knight g4, things like getting f5 in, things like knight h5, like our queen e8 move, like king h7. So. Those are the only things that are really on my mind here. In terms of this particular game, well, knight here, here, f5, takes, takes, h3. Not sure if we want to be playing that. e4 definitely gets a little dicey. A little dicey for me. So I'm going to take a chill approach, which is knight h5, probably queen e8. Why is our queen e8 move so important? Because it guards the knight and lets us play f5. But before I can play queen e8, I need to play a6. So I like a6. It's really important to stop knight b5. I want to play queen e8, but I can't do it. Knight b5 is way too annoying. He's doing a3. He sees me do it. He's copying it. Buddy, get your own moves, all right? It's only good in my position. It's not good in yours, all right? Here we go. Now we can play this move. It's very important we have our queen here to watch this knight. And guys, oh no, no, no. If we're seeing c4, if we're seeing c4, for real, it's over. I mean, it's it's just a wash. You, you gotta close your eyes and just trust that this works. Just, you just gotta send it. Dude, there's no looking back in positions like this. There's no looking back. You just gotta play f4, g5, and just just let the boys do the talking. Now, on a serious note, yes, I want to play g4, and yes, I can play g4. But, after knight h4, you might start to second guess your, your light squares. Honestly, I think the position we have here is pretty full sendable, and I am going to be full sending it, all right? g4, but f3 immediately. I want to just ruin the pawn structure as much as possible. Okay, now you won. I am, wow, I'm getting uh, surprised by my opponent's moves here. I think I still want to do it. 
Honestly. Now let's just let's just do it anyway. Yeah, time for this move. I think let's take. And the uh, the boys are gonna come marching in. All right, well, that's how to attack with the King's Indian. Um, yeah, F3 and just boom, wrap that thing up. There we go. Nice and easy. Sweet. Okay, well, everyone note that down. Queen there, Queen check. Queen check and go here. Okay, chess is easy. Just take that queen. Hello to Rebecca. Yes, we have Yasser spectating in the chat right now, which is uh, actually causing me to play better, which never happens. move from the lad. Um, I still think I want to uh, try to force things with this. Knight f6 can also be played. I think I'll start with that. I can really see you know, knight e5 being played. Okay. Hello, Neprosto. I am posting up hard. You know what I want? I want a smothered meat. We got, we got uh, smothered meat kind of vibes right now. So honestly, uh, totally get the move. Unfortunately, the the rook can't take because I have the knight there. So the best you can do is maybe trade, but your knight's also hanging with check. So the number of things that need to be done now. And I think white's bleeding. Losing too many pieces, even that knight's hanging. Although I'm pretty sure I don't want to take it. Oh guys, I think we are gonna get our smothered meat. Wait, are we? It's gonna be real close, but I think we are. Ship here, make sure he doesn't have h3. Rook there, and then knight here. Smothered meat. Well, I hope he doesn't move the bishop. Actually, no, let me give him the check. I think we could really smother him. And then we come in with the other knight. This could be the most beautiful game of my life. Okay, let's go knight here. He's completely uh, stuck. So really what I should have done is played this to give him the idea he could do that. But bishop takes is still a good move. Or bishop here. It stops me because it'd be pinned. But it is possible he just doesn't does not see that. But there's going to be a smothered mate no matter what here. There must be. This is definitely a step bro kind of position. Yeah, he played it. That's a very good move. I think taking it is just less fun. So I'm going to be playing king here. Now, one of these bishop moves needs to be played. And then we got more lads that we're bringing to the party. This king is not happy. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I believe we bring this guy in. Because now if he takes it, once again, it's me. And we get our mate. We get our smothered mate. Woo. Quick Clicker says, you had that for four moves. I don't believe I did, sir. Let's have a look. So I don't have it here. And I don't have it here. And I have it here. Hmm. Well, actually. Well, actually, you're wrong.
One thing that's nice about this game is we did set out to get the smothered mate and we got it. You know, that's just a reminder in life. You gotta be a go-getter. You gotta be a go-getter. You gotta get out there and seize the day. But once we got this, guys, I think we should all, on a serious note, we should be diving into those notebooks, those notepads that we've all been taking, right? Uh-huh, yes, nod your head. Over the course of this speed run, we've seen this before, and we should know how to handle and how to begin starting an attack here. Knight h5 and f5, we know we wanna do, and you should all know that that queen on e8 is like, integral it's so key to launching a sex 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 it's key to having sex it's key for launching a successful attack because it guards the knight on h5 and the queen attacking the knight is pretty much the only thing that prevents you from playing f5 so you rush into this i don't know something like this and all of a sudden there might be a move like this in your face right and your knight's saying no need to deal with this so instead, right, we want to play queen here. Huge move, but be patient. Knight b5 will always just be too frustrating. If it happens, you'll always regret it. You'll have to go back and then you'll kick him out and it's just not worth your time. So play a6, stop this. It's the one small move you're gonna play on that side of the board. And this, I'm referring to when the center is locked up specifically. Get your a6 in, get queen e8, get f5. And that position plays itself from there. All right, let's get another one. All right, we got the white pieces. What's it gonna be this time? Start with knight f3. They're expecting mainline theory. Play d3, remind them that you're bad at chess and you're gonna block your bishop in, all that stuff. And actually, don't think we've seen this, have we? New move, I think. So this one is going to be interesting because it, you know, our plan might be to play f4, but our opponent has already started with the plan f5. First of all, why do people keep doing this? Dude, c3. <laughs> Immediate c3. Okay, it goes back. That's fine. Hey, we got a feisty player here. Somebody stop this guy. Well, I think I'm gonna have to take this, guys. I'm required by law to take this pawn. Let's see what happens. So he's going for an attack pretty aggressively because he doesn't even have his bishop ready to go. So I, I think this is pretty early and Remember, when you push this pawn, your plan really should be some sort of follow-up with like knight h5 as black. But I just don't think he's in time. Like here I can get e5, d4, a lot of uh, a lot of moves that I think are that I think he's unprepared for, put it that way. Okay, here comes d4 and h3 is going to force knight h6 which isn't the worst move but it could probably be it could probably be improved upon uh, i'm even thinking of taking and just getting the knight out hc4 but no i mean taking here is uh, needs to happen first just remove that knight from the position he is sending it he truly is You for the raid, Tina, the Bell and Kaya. Welcome, viewers. Welcome, future friends. Thanks for the shout out, Neil. Go, Dina. A 300 and some people here. 300 and change. We're doing a King's Indian speed run. 
Means I'm playing the King's Indian attack with the white pieces, King's Indian defense with the black pieces, and it means I am looking to take names in the 1200 category. And we have my win rate on the screen there, um, and that's not there for any other reason than to you know, at least remotely convince you that there's a possibility I could be a grandmaster. You know, people in their channel have their doubts from time to time, so. Once in a while, I just go beat 60 1200s and they say, oh yeah, yeah, okay, never mind. He definitely, definitely is a great master. There's no way. Let's go rook here. He's, strangely, his knight actually defends that square, so queen b3 is not terribly impressive. Queen g5, I mean, relax, bro. Relax, I just got a raid, dude. Does this guy not know? When you get a raid, you're not supposed to like, Put the guy in the dirt all of a sudden. It's like, you know, chill a bit. Like, you know, let me win a few. <laughs> My goodness, bro. You're really coming at me here. What's he gonna go for now? The pro stow. Thank you for the 10 subs for that raid right there. As always, we hope the raiders get them. And if no one is following the channel from that raid, I invite you to do so. We're uh, a friendly channel, unless you're 1200, which unfortunately may be all of you, but clearly as you can see here, we're not being friendly to 1200s right now. But I promise you, this is, yeah, it's not an everyday thing, just kind of once in a while. Just kind of whip him into shape a little bit. You know, it's not really a big deal. Wouldn't wouldn't uh, read into it too much. I think we gotta move this queen. I mean, I'd like to do this and sort of win the bishop. That would be great, but I have a feeling my opponent is wise to the task. So I think it's uh, time for a move. Let's hit him with this one. Your 700, all good. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Anyone below 1200, don't worry. I've already passed you. <laughs> I've already passed you. You have nothing to be concerned about. Does anyone see the devious intention of my opponent here? Very devious. Let's bring this knight back. I don't I don't trust them for one gosh darn second. I have six. I think it's time to just uh, move this bishop. I'm not anywhere too impressive just to pretend that I'm actually developing my pieces but blitz you're 395 well if you're 395 blitz then there's a nice easy tactic for you right here flames Olsen I invite you, Flames, to jump into this position and, and experience what a 300 rated tactic looks like. And it starts with Rook takes b6. All right? And this right here is where the 300 level tactic begins. Followed by Queen takes h7. Now, after Queen takes h7, we're going to follow up with Knight g5. We're going to be forking the King and the Queen. And at the end, we're going to be forking the two Rooks there. Now, the way I see it, any 300 should be able to find that. So yeah, welcome to all 300s. All 300 of you. Take this one as well. I'm gonna start feasting on all the pawns here. Any good 300 would see that. Yeah, all these pawns are mine. Yum. Yeah, at the end of that tactic, I had only won a single pawn. That, that was a tactic to win one pawn. That's it. <laughs> you know? Life's hard, man. Chess is hard. I did all that and I won a single pawn. Tough, dude. I'm 
I'm in the mood to just send this pawn down the board. And I'm not meeting a lot of opposition at the moment. Okay, this is a very correct move. However, I think it might be a little bit too late. Tempting to play this, but I think the simplest is probably to just go here. The bishop pair is going strong. And I think he might lose this knight here. I got a feeling. Mm. Well, he's certainly going to be playing this move next, isn't he? Maybe let's go here. Trying to uh, box the king in just a tad. There we go. So the reason I didn't play rook here, he would have played g6 guarding the knight. It's too obvious. Rook a6. Ah, there you go. Play g6 for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Make sure to take all these pawns. Don't want him to have even a glimmer of hope. Bring that bishop back. Oh, hang on. I gotta protect that rook. I saw you there, dude. I saw you trying to snipe me. And we'll go for the world famous king check me. Oh, he just didn't have didn't have enough in the tank. My name's Speed Only, and that's all you get from me. Speed only. Win all my games by flag. Just the flag master over here. GG! I tell you, I've been, I've been sharing this uh, since earlier, guys. When I long ago set out studying the game of chess, you know, pursued the Grandmaster title for my entire life, and finally achieved it, I thought, you know what? I want to play 1200s all day. And here I am, living the dream. They say some people live their entire life without finding their passion, and yet here I am, right? Just living it up. That guy was 1300, so I failed. True, but if we beat him enough times, he'll be 1200, you watch. Ashkel, thanks for the five gifted subs. Intermission with six months. Neprosto, familiar with 10 gifted. Nicola, gifting to Dina. Came in with the raid. Thank you very much, Nicola. A thousand bits, and hello to you, sir. David Arvid, thanks for the tier one sub. JT, with 100 bits. Prob Swizzy for 11 months. Sawman, 85 for two months. Uh, Bob K, gifted five subs early. Thanks so much, Bob. We also got um, Emles Batuidi. Thanks for the prime sub. Fresh as ever. Thanks for the five bomb there, Hash as well. Yoink. Yeah, that what it is. I know. It's like they don't know me here. 1287, which means I think it should only take us two more games to hit the coveted. Coveted. 1300. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh oh, we're against the Canadian. Oh, I got there first. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. He didn't expect that. Oh! What in the hell is that move? G4? He uncorked that one. He had this one planned for me. G4! You kidding me, bro? Let's see here. Well, I was attacking it. Okay, I'm gonna play this one. H4? No way. He can't be Canadian. These look like good moves. 
There's no way. Okay. We're, we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to play this one. It's it just, it's a, it's a requirement. We're going to have to go for D4, takes and D4. We need to, okay, I think he's, I think he's coming at us with that one. Let's take this. If pawn takes, I'm liking the look of queen a5, you know? I think I'm putting something together here. Uh-huh. And if he castles, he's also dropping that pawn, so. Looks rough all around for him here. Remember, guys, there's one thing that everybody, everybody needs to remember. You will not get mated with bishop on g7. Now, if you suck, you will, but otherwise you shouldn't. If you have a bishop on g7, even if this happens, and the queen gets over here to the h file, queen h7 check, all you need to do is have your rook here, and your king will have a square to move over to, and you'll never get mated. The queen can chill all she wants on h7, but it just won't happen. Really, truly. It's very, people like to get real scared of like, you know, like a queen on the h file, but when you have this situation, you just need the f8 square. You just need the f8 square. So if I do something like this, that means I'm pretty much not concerned about that side of the board for a good little while. So I'm gonna play rook d8 for many other reasons, but that's one of them. If he castles, I'm also looking at queen takes a2. So it's not that easy for him to get out of this. He really wants the castle. Like, this guy's thirsting for the castle. Uh, I got a few pieces here. They need developing. Knight c6 is uh, not going to be a terribly uh, difficult move for me to play. Now, the question is, how do I go about meeting this guy? Because he's asking for it. Is it possible? I mean, b5, b4... If he takes, you know, I'm not sure I'm doing that much there. D4, these are all good moves, but it does result in the pieces getting traded, so I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm just gonna keep developing for now. Because keeping my queen on the board is not the easiest thing to do if I play B5, B4. Bishop d3. Well, this looks rather tempting to take. Maybe I can spice things up with c4 after. Is that available? I hope so. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's all I got, you know? So I'm going to take, play c4. If pawn takes, okay, pawn takes was available, but those pawns would have gotten pretty weak, I think. So c4, Looking to take, and the nice thing for me is if he takes, first of all, we get to laugh at him, he has triple pawns, but then we play knight e5 and take that. And there's no way that works. There's no way that works. So let's take, we want an open file, and we also want to start targeting this pawn, which it's not that easy to, to deal with. So let's just bring a rook here, nice and easy. And notice how my opponent's the one that launched the attack, but it's also my opponent who has forgot about that attack for like 20 moves. <laughs> It's all been about me on this side of the board and what I can do with the position. Let's go d4. Okay, we're ready to utilize the ready to utilize the pin here. Knight takes b3 is a massive threat, and very importantly, if knight takes b3, queen takes d8, our queen is covering. Well, this move uh, definitely looks like a banger. Knight b3, king c2, queen f5, well, looks like it should be good enough. I think it should be good enough. Is there better, is there that much better? I mean, queen f5 is a pretty attractive, fancy move. Queen f5, just style on him. Just do him so dirty, like in that Tide Pod treatment. Just we have five. Just it's 
That sizzles a little bit, doesn't it? Just sizzles. Yeah, and he's gonna have to play this and basically walk into the exact same thing, but it is a little bit better now because previously if I checked, he went king there, if I did queen there, he could have taken the knight. So now when I do it, king is gonna have to, well, okay, that's much worse. <laughs> okay. Give this check. And we'll bring the queen in and look for the mate here. GG. That is 61. The big 62 is coming up. The big 62 is coming. That's gonna be 1300 as well. Will I go 69 and 0? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The whole reason I even came up with the speed run idea was to get to 69 and 0. Why do you think the sub count is at 69? Like the sub goal, rather. You know, we're all about 69 here. Just this random number we like. Yes. Yes. Hamsterham88, thanks for the 18 months. We have uh, Bucko in here. Looking to get frisky with a song. I could do you a song there, uh, Buck. I uh, did. Give you a little volume on that too. All right, let's get another game here, guys. This is a 1300 push, let's go. Oh, and we got a Canadian. And we don't have a Canadian. This is not the 1300 push. Forget all that. And forget all that. Everything that that was built up to, forget it. We're gonna try it again. Try one more time. And this is the game for 1300. Let's go. We got Leonardo from Spain. Yeah, we do. Here we go. Knight c6. Okay, he's going chill, you know? He's going, he's going for d6. Bishop, get castled. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's get h3. These moves should be automatic. I'm pretty much gonna ignore what's going on here and you know, try to go for our plans that we've uh, sort of talked about. Okay, dude, remember, do you guys remember I warned you about this? I told you guys about this, right? said the reason we have the queen on e1 is to guard the knight after f4 but dude it doesn't work when the knight's not hanging i'm guarding the knight so he's sacking a piece to win a pawn it's not gonna work it's not gonna work now question is we have a few ways to simplify number one you know, we play bishop takes and takes, or you know, number two, we play this and this, and queen h5, all fancy. But what my opponent has failed to realize here is he's not sacking a piece to win a pawn. What he's doing is he's sacking a piece to then take this knight, I assume. He's not even taking the knight! Who is this animal? Knight takes e4 and then E5. I mean, look, don't you all want this guy in your promos? I mean, if you're trying to promote to 1300, I'm sure we've all met final bosses that are a little more difficult than this. How come when you're five points away from your rating goal, you're not playing Leonardo 7121? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> How? How does that never happen to you? They know it doesn't. They won't even pretend. All right, we gotta move, we gotta move. Where shall we put this thing? 
C3, D2. I think D2 is probably a little more in line with our, um, like with our uh, moves in general. So I think I'll put it here. Okay. I'm gonna have to take that from you. And we are up a piece, but our opponent has two pawns. So because we're up a piece, I'm gonna probably immediately offer him a trade of queens, which he will likely decline. Also immediately though. Okay, okay. Pretty impressive. Let's get the hell out of dodge there. Man, this guy's coming at me with the smoke. I think I'm gonna hit him with F4. I think this might be a, a requisite move. There is no bishop g5, this is correct. This is correct. Uh, I'm actually surprised he took that. Do we wanna take? G5? Man, this guy's a full sender. This is, is a move though that might disturb him because he might be committed to the full send. You know? He might be sold on the full send. And I think rook f4 might potentially throw it throw a spanner in the works. So, takes here, I can understand, you know, g5. It's a little bit, um, the initiative starts to uh, starts to form, but I'm wondering if rook here is gonna throw him off at all. Rook here, knight f6. You know, is he the kind of guy that's playing a move like that? That's what I'm wondering. Is he the kind of guy? Honestly, I think he is. <laughs> I think he is. I think he would play knight f6 after rook f4. So you know what? I think we gotta say power to this guy and just go for queen takes, you know? This is the objectively the move. Queen takes f4. And oh my good lord, what is that? You know how much respect I was giving this guy? I mean, I mean, I was sitting there just, you know, really, really calculating some, some serious stuff. And the guy comes out with that move? Rook D8? You're not gonna frighten me like that? Let's offer a trade. You know, he doesn't look like the type of guy to take a trade. Like, he's already declined once. I just don't think it's it's uh, even on his radar to do that, you know? It's very well defended, believe me. I'm well aware. But, I still think that's the best place for the bishop. Alright. Alright. This is a Bucko song, right? Yeah, Bucko bonsai with his song. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa! I'm gonna have to take it. That was a serious move though. He had some, uh, he had some real ideas there. This rook's gonna have to get over here. The E1. Man, he's really in the tank here. Maybe he doesn't see this. Because he's been playing some pretty tricky moves, I would say. Is he still here? Maybe I'll use the chess.com emoji system. Even the, even the thumbs up.
Pro just checked out. Straight up. Game abandoned. Like, that was enough. <laughs> Bro just peaced out. Leonardo! Feels bad, man. But also feels good, man. 1300, there we go. Hey, Leonardo checked out. He honestly put it in a pretty good game, considering he played Knight Takes E4 for no reason. Hung a piece. That was a scary one. Yeah, I'm number one in Stone League. Go me. Go me. Baco, great song by. I feel like I've never said that in my life. Hey, Doug. You learned so much from Leo? Did you really? What did you learn? Tell me that. What did you learn from Leo? Cannon minion. Please pop is under my control. Ha ha ha. What are your orders, DJ Nebula? <laughs> what a song. What kind of music was that? I don't know what to call that genre. Maybe something elect electronic? I don't know. Robotronic? Robotronic is my my name for it. E defile. Sack a piece, sack a rook. Yeah, some good stuff. Some good stuff. Hey, farty party. Did I miss your song, Dylan? Um. I don't think so, honestly. Yeah, no. Nothing on my end, unfortunately. Uh, persistence module, thanks for the 36 months. Look at that, persistence, three years on the dot. Thank you, persistence. Gene chest as well for 16 months with Prime. Yeah, it was pretty good, Bucko. I don't know, um, I don't know, Farty Party. I'm just saying, I, uh, don't have it, uh, don't have it here. Streamlabs has processed. Well, we don't use Streamlabs, Farty Party. Did you do exclamation mark donate? Because it should be through stream elements. Exclamation mark donate should give you a, a link to our donation page and it should be with uh, stream elements. <laughs> well, it's hardly a scam if the donation link <laughs> says stream elements and he's sending it somewhere else. Hey, uh, did you uh, get my donation for the song? Guy, yeah, just, uh, just bought a hockey ticket with it. Did you did you get it? Oh, you're not uh, Ticketmaster. Oh, okay, that's weird. That's weird. That's not my fault. <laughs> no, but I I uh, can tell you, Farty Party, that was a very you know, relatively recent thing. Let's say in the last uh, month, two months, um, and. And let's say you had the donation link just saved on your computer instead of doing exclamation mark donate every time and then clicking it, then you would have a different link from what uh, from what it is now. Yeah, you went to the same page. So there you go. Reminder, exclamation mark donate will bring up the donation link. We recently, last month or two, switched to stream elements. So that might be why. Yeah, it should, Salty, <laughs> if we're doing things right, it should. Can you order pizza here? You can order a lot here. You can order pizza, drinks, all that stuff. All that stuff. Okay, Farty, definitely. Or you can just let me know what it is. I mean, like I know if it's on Spotify, it's probably not too hard to find. You can look it up. Alkine 47 thanks for the 58 months. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Sue it. You reached 1300 today? Hey, congrats. You and me have something in common, dude. Congratulations. Let's go. Love to hear about the chat's goals. You and I, buddy. We're on the same pace right now. Correct, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise. Correct. Just two GMs speedrunning their way up. That's right. Well, I'm waiting for uh, Party Party's song. I think that might be our uh, closing song for today, guys, because uh, I do have to wrap up. Just thought I would uh, get a speedrun session. Today, I would have been streaming all day, actually, from the morning. I would have streamed uh, Arena Kings and probably been streaming all the way till now. But we actually, well, I actually used the time to set up a few things like this camera we're using now, the lights, the stream room, and uh, there's a few things that were being delivered today. So I would have been streaming all day, but I always had to end now. So unfortunately, it's a little bit shorter than I would usually do. But we streamed for about 11 hours yesterday. So I'd like to think I have credit for at least today. And uh, tomorrow I'll be streaming uh, all the way into the night as well. So tomorrow will be a long stream. Got your song there, Farty Party. Let's put this one on. This will be our closer. Here we go. This is uh, Mark in the chat. His name's Farty Party 927. This is his music. He's been uh, sending his songs in on the channel for a good little while now. And uh, honestly, they're usually straight bangers. Mark Wise on Spotify. Farty Party in chat. So, hey, if you like the music, Make sure to show him some love. Ask him where to find him. Check him out on Spotify. We got techno producers in our chat, which is uh, just really sweet. So let's hear this one. I know, Bucko. I know. We're, we actually have something that's going to cover it. It'll probably be here tomorrow. So that'll be the next on the list, Bucko, to fix. Hope you guys enjoyed the speed run, by the way. I am wrapping up for today. Sorry, it's a shorter one. We'll continue the speed run um, through the uh, through the week. Eric is also coming back in town today, so in general he'll be around a little bit more. Go, Eric! All right, but thanks for watching the speed run, guys. Heavy metal techno. I mean, hey, if there's a beat on it. I can tolerate a lot of things. He made grunge techno, it'd probably be fire. GG's, Haskell, GG's, everybody. Thank you guys for hanging. I think when we raid, we're gonna raid our buddy John Bartholomew, who has been uh, raiding the channel a few times lately. It'd be nice to get him back. John's a good buddy. Hope to see him in person soon. Some more trips. Yeah, some JB energy. Yeah, guys, it was fun today. Like I said, I needed to set some stuff up, but the stream room is really coming together, which I'm very excited about. So the streams are just gonna be better and better this uh, going forward. So that's exciting for me. Hopefully you guys notice it as well, but we've upgraded a few things. The last one that we fix will be probably just the, the background here and uh, getting the sound quality. Perfect. I think it can still be improved. Thank you. Yeah, 1300 we hit today. Feeling pretty good about that. Honestly. Feeling pretty good. Oof. Oh, this is good stuff.
We're at 62 and 0, guys. We'll leave it there. Come back to it another time. The guitar. He's hitting the guitar. This does sound like some uh, some final boss music, doesn't it? What song is this? Well, exclamation mark song should work. There we go. Yeah. Other than that, Mark Wise. Very easy name. I like the name, by the way. <laughs> Mark Wise. Very easy to search. M A R K W I S E. On Spotify. Serious stuff there. Yeah, it's a good one, man. I like it. All right, bros. I gotta get going. I have a, I have a thing I need to get to um, pretty soon. So check out uh, Mark Wise on Spotify. I'm out, guys. It's been a blast, and I'll be back tomorrow, probably around. 5.30 or 6 Eastern. And uh, I'll be streaming starting then, probably do a bit of the speed run, stream into the evening, keep things going for Thirsty Thursday. All right, so I'll see you guys then. We're gonna raid uh, John Bartholomew. Send you guys over there. Have a good one, y'all. Make sure to follow us right here on Twitch. You won't miss anything. You always know when we're live. And the speed run is going to drop on YouTube in two days. So go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Exclamation mark YouTube. Exclamation mark extra. We have two channels. It'll be dropping in a couple days, so don't miss it. Bye, guys.